but I do think sometimes there's complacency. Here in Europe, I think that there are a lot of young people who forget the issues. that were at stake during the Cold War, who forget what it meant to have a wall. And I'll be honest, there have been times when I listen to the rhetoric in Europe where and easily equivalence somehow between the United States and Russia. And between how our governments operate versus other governments operate where those distinctions aren't made. I've said many times around the world that, like any government, like any country, like any set of human institutions, we have our flaws, we've operated imperfectly. There are times when we've made mistakes. There are times where I've made mistakes, or our administration hasn't always aligned ourselves. with the values that we need to align ourselves with. It's a work of constant improvement. But I can say to the German people that the United States has been good for Germany. has looked out for Germany, has provided security for Germany, has helped to rebuild Germany and unify Germany. And I can say, across Europe, that many principles that have been taken for granted here around free speech and around civil liberties, and an independent judiciary. And fighting corruption those are principles that, not perfectly, but generally, We have tried to apply not just in our own country but also with respect to our foreign policy. And that should be remembered. Because in an age where there's so much active misinformation and it's packaged very well and it looks the same.
when you see it on a Facebook page or you turn on your television where some overzealousness on the part of a you S official is equated with constant and severe repression elsewhere if everything seems to be the same and no distinctions are made, then we won't know what to protect. We won't know. what to fight for. And we can lose so much of what we've gained in terms of the kind of democratic freedoms and market-based economies and prosperity that we've come to take for granted. That was a long answer, wasn't it? I don't remember if there was a second part to it. I got all caught up in that one. Question. I asked you if you advised the president-elect on things. President Obama, yes, I did. I did. He ran a extraordinarily unconventional campaign. And it resulted in the biggest political upset in perhaps modern political history American history. And that means that he now has to transition to governance. And what I said to him was that what may work in generating enthusiasm or passion during elections may be different than what will work in terms of unifying the country and gaining the trust even of those who didn't support him. And he's indicated his willingness to his understanding of that. But you're absolutely right that that has to reflect itself not only in the things he says. but also how he fills out his administration. And my hope is, is that that's something he is thinking about, because not only is the President of the United
states somebody that the entire country looks to for direction but sets the agenda internationally in a lot of ways. Question, and Syria? President Obama, with respect to Syria, we are going to continue to work. As we have over the last five, six years, to push towards a political transition and settlement. It would be naive of me to suggest that with Russia committed militarily as it is to supporting what? In many cases, are barbarous tactics by the Assad regime to crush the opposition. The sort of indiscriminate bombing that we've been seeing not just in Aleppo but in many parts of the country over the last several years it would be naive of me to suggest that there's going to be a sudden One hundred and eighty degree turn in policy by either Assad or Russia or Iran at this point. But we are going to continue to make the argument. We are going to continue to try to find humanitarian steps that can reach the people there. We're going to continue to try to obtain cessations of hostilities. That lessen the human tragedy and the migration that's taking place. But, ultimately, the way this is going to be resolved is going to have to be a recognition by Russia. and a willingness to pressure Assad that a lasting, durable peace with a functioning country requires the consent of people. You cannot purchase people's consent through killing them. They haven't made that transition yet, but we're going to keep on trying. Chancellor Merkel So as to my position on President Assad, Assad as president has actively tried to kill his own people.
he has bombed them with barrel bombs in a most terrible way. He has brought untold suffering over his people if you look at Aleppo and other places. When you talk to the many Syrian refugees who have fled here to Germany. They will be able to tell you their own personal story, and the majority of them the great majority of them fled from Assad. And most of them not even fled the IS. So I don't see him as an ally. Question, thank you very much. Mr. President, you describe your hopes rather more in great. Historical terms. Let me break this down to months and years. The fact that Stephen Bannon was made as chief strategist, meeting Mr. Farage, and the fact that prominent Republican representatives did not decide to join this transition team what makes you confident against the background of this that president trump can be a reliable partner to the world and to europe and germany Now, Madam Chancellor, if you hear those words of praise of the President with regard to you. This, what he said, can this not sort of demand too much from you and from Germany? Because too much is demanded. Too much is expected from you too great are the expectations, you can't meet them. President Obama, I'm always optimistic. There were times where I was in the Oval Office and people would come to me with all kinds of political problems and policy problems and international problems, and my team would be getting discouraged and depressed. And I would say to them, 
I have to be optimistic. Because the odds of somebody named Barack Obama being President of the United States were very low, and the fact that In my lifetime, I have seen such enormous, positive change in the United States and around the world tells me that. Although history does not travel in a straight line, it moves in the direction of justice. and freedom and a better life for people. But we have to fight for it. We have to work for it. What makes me cautiously optimistic about my successor and the shift from campaign mode? To governance is there something about the solemn responsibilities of that office. The extraordinary demands that are placed on the United States not just by its own people. but by people around the world that forces you to focus, that demands seriousness. And if you are not serious about the job, then you probably won't be there very long because it will expose problems. Even when you're doing a job, even when you are attentive, There are so many things that come across your desk that people are going to question you, and you're going to have opponents and you're going to have critics. And you figure that out pretty fast when you're sitting there. And I think the president-elect is going to see fairly quickly that the demands and responsibilities of a U.S. president are not ones that you can treat casually, and that in a big, complex, diverse country. The only way that you can be successful is by listening and reaching out and working with a wide variety of people. And so it is my hope that that is what will happen. And I'm going to do everything I can over the next two months to help assure that that happens.
it is absolutely true that Chancellor Merkel is going to have significant responsibilities. has had extraordinary burdens that she's had to carry. If she chooses to continue, you're right, she will have big burdens. I wish I could be there to lighten her load somewhat, but she's tough. And I have I know what it means to carry burdens because the fact of the matter is. is that if there are problems around the world, the first question people ask is, why isn't Washington doing something about it? This is why it's so important not to discount or take for granted the importance of the transatlantic alliance. And this is probably the best place for me to end. In International for A in G20S, in G7S. In the United Nations the United States and Germany are not always perfectly aligned. America and Europe are not always perfectly aligned. but the voice that speaks out on behalf of some dissident who is jailed halfway around the world. The voice who is expressing concern about some child in an African village who doesn't have clean drinking water or is subject to some terrible disease. The voice that insists on rules and norms governing international affairs. The voice that helps to steer the world away from war wherever possible that's our voice more often than not. And we're not always successful. But if that voice is absent, or if that voice is divided, we will be living in a meaner. Harsher, more troubled world. And we have to remember that. And whoever is the US president. And whoever is the chancellor of Germany.
and whoever is the leader of other European nations and other democracies around the world they need to recognize that.